It's time to show the Northern Territory some love. In this video we're going to explore the field that started the first major gold rush in the Northern Territory, and as always, I'll discuss the geology that led to the deposition of gold and other valuable commodities, and it's a fascinating story to say the least. Gold was first discovered in the Northern Territory in 1865, at the Finnis River, southwest of Darwin. However this initial find did not lead to a significant gold rush, so our story begins in Pine Creek which is approximately 226 kilometers or about 140 miles south of Darwin. In 1871, the construction of the Overland Telegraph Line through the Northern Territory was underway, connecting Adelaide to Darwin. As workers toiled in the rugged terrain near Pine Creek, they stumbled upon glimmering traces of gold as they dug. This accidental discovery sparked a gold rush, drawing prospectors and fortune seekers from far and wide. The news of gold quickly spread, and by the mid-1870s, Pine Creek was swarming with miners eager to stake their claims. Prospectors used a variety of methods to extract gold, starting with simple tools like pans and cradles. The scarcity of water in the arid region made traditional panning difficult, leading many to employ dry panning techniques. Dry cradling involved shaking and vibrating the cradle to encourage the separation of gold based on density differences, though this required skill and was labour intensive. Another method was dry blowing. This involves using a cradle or a similar apparatus without water. The process relies on air to separate heavier gold from lighter materials. By creating airflow, either manually or with the help of bellows, miners could blow away lighter materials, leaving heavier gold particles behind. This method was less efficient than using water but was necessary in dry areas. So the issue with dry panning is it's far less effective at capturing gold compared to methods that use water to separate gold from gravels so a great deal of gold would have been lost during extraction. But regardless of that, the region was rich enough to still pay the bills of the miners who first worked the alluvial waterways of Pine Creek. As is typical with gold mining stories, as surface gold became scarce, miners turned their attention to hard rock mining. They began to dig deeper into the earth, employing more sophisticated techniques such as crushing and stamping to extract gold from ore. This shift marked a transition from small-scale individual prospecting to larger organised mining operations. The influx of miners and their families led to the establishment of settlements, infrastructure and a burgeoning economy. Towns like Pine Creek grew rapidly, serving as hubs for mining activity and commerce. Gold has been eroding from the rocks in the Northern Territory for a very long time. About 1.88 billion years ago, the land that would become known as the Pine Creek Origin in Australia's Northern Territory was a dynamic and tumultuous landscape. This era was marked by the assembly of the supercontinent Nuna, also known as Columbia, a colossal landmass formed through the convergence of ancient tectonic plates. Nuna was a supercontinent that included major cratons from current day North America, Greenland, Baltica, Siberia and parts of East Antarctica and Australia among others. This tectonic activity involved the convergence of ancient crustal blocks and microcontinents, leading to significant crustal deformation and thickening. As these plates collided and compressed, a series of mountain building events known as orogenies sculpted the Earth's crust in the Northern Territory, giving rise to fold belts and metamorphic terrains. The Pine Creek region's geology is largely a result of a continent to continent collision that occurred during the Paleoproterozoic era. This collision led to the formation of the Pine Creek origin characterised by complex folding, faulting and metamorphism of sedimentary and volcanic rocks. In layman terms, this means that a major mountain range once existed here, with geological processes similar to what is occurring in the modern day Himalayan mountains taking place. In the map of Nuna, you can see the area where mountains rose. So because of this, there was immense crustal thickening that occurred. The thickening of the crust means that no volcanic arcs were formed, instead magma pulled up in the deeper recesses of the earth where it eventually cooled and solidified into granite. These granitic outcrops are now exposed to the surface, as the mountain that once dominated the Northern Territory has largely been eroded away throughout the eons. The gold and granite once existed deep within the earth, but erosion has worked to break down the mountain ranges revealing both of these phenomena to the surface in present day. The granitic intrusions can be closely associated with mineral deposits including gold. They may provide heat and fluids that contribute to the hydrothermal systems responsible for mineralization. But it's not just gold that exists here. The Pine Creek region is rich in mineral deposits including silver and zinc, tantalum, tungsten, platinum group elements, nickel, cobalt and major uranium deposits. 
all formed through complex geological processes that have concentrated these elements into economically viable formations. The intense tectonic activity during this period caused the deformation and metamorphism of shales, grey wax and volcanic layers which were subjected to high pressures and temperatures, transforming them into new metamorphic rocks. This process also enhanced the permeability of these rocks, creating fractures and faults that would become crucial pathways for mineral rich fluids. Deep within the earth, geothermal energy drove the circulation of hydrothermal fluids. These fluids, superheated and infused with precious metals and minerals from the surrounding rock, moved through the newly formed fractures and fault lines. As they ascended towards cooler regions of the crust, changes in temperature, pressure and chemical environment prompted the precipitation of minerals from the fluids. Gold, often found in conjunction with sulphide minerals such as pyrite and arsenopyrite, precipitated out of the hydrothermal fluids. It became concentrated in quartz veins, which crystallized within the fractures and faults within the rock. These veins, often running through the metamorphic rock formations, held rich deposits of gold that awaited discovery millions of years later. The Pine Creek gold deposits were formed during a period of intense tectonic activity and mountain building associated with the assembly of the supercontinent in the Paleoproterozoic era. The deformation and metamorphism of rocks created conditions favourable for the circulation of gold-bearing hydrothermal fluids, which precipitated gold in quartz veins and other structures. This complex geological history has made Pine Creek a significant gold mining region in Australia, with a legacy of both historical and ongoing mining activities. In recent years, further exploration has been conducted in the vicinity of the old Pine Creek diggings. I wanted to quote the Newmont's Mining Company's website before we delve into an additional component of gold deposition. To quote them, the Pine Creek origin has a 150 year history of gold mining, with more than 4 million ounces of gold produced. Most deposits are orogenic gold deposits in the Paleoproterozoic Cosmos Supergroup, with gold most commonly hosted in quartz veins, lodes, sheeted veins, stockworks and saddle reefs, with some gold also hosted within iron-rich sediments. Gold also occurs with zinc and silver associated with volcanogenic massive sulphide deposits. So we've already discussed the orogenic gold, which is a type of gold deposit formed from fluid movement and metamorphic processes during mountain building events in orogenic belts. But what about the volcanogenic massive sulphide deposits? Well, it appears that these formed prior to the Pine Creek origin. Volcanogenic massive sulphide deposits, also known as VMS deposits, form on the sea floor. The formation of VMS deposits is linked to extensional tectonic settings where submarine volcanic activity facilitated the formation of hydrothermal systems. These systems precipitated sulphide minerals, resulting in the VMS deposits of gold, silver and zinc. From this deposit, it's clear that the area was a sea floor prior to it being uplifted by the orogeny. These mineral deposits were uplifted and have been preserved in the rocks of the Northern Territory. To summarise, the gold in this region of the Northern Territory is mostly related to the mountain building events that occurred. But we also have volcanic deposits of gold, silver and zinc that were deposited during the time this area was a sea floor. The Northern Territory is a complex and ancient area, and due to the harsh and rugged nature of the land, the exploration and mineral extraction of the region is still in its infancy in comparison to deposits in Victoria, New South Wales and Queensland. I anticipate more discoveries will be made in the future as the region is further explored. So this is just one of many gold fields that exist in the Northern Territory. I will cover other fields in future videos. Thanks for watching. Are you interested in animals? I've just started the second channel called Paleozoology that discusses extinct and extant animals with a current focus on the megafauna that once dominated and roamed Australia. I've released a video on the marsupial lion which existed in Australia during the time Indigenous Australians walked the continent. I've also covered the wombat that was the size of a car, known as the Diprotodon or the largest terrestrial lizard known as the Megalania. I'd love to have you along for the journey as more videos are released. You can find a link to this channel and to the aforementioned videos in the description and in the pinned comment in the comment section. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.